In today's video, we're gonna go check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Breaking news as you can say goodbye to Apple. Now, this is absolutely insane. Like, you seriously will not believe what is going on. So, as I'm sure you know, Apple have recently been coming out with some announcements and warnings for us, which is great, but this hasn't actually got anything to do with that. And if you have an Android or Samsung for once, you're probably the lucky ones, and these guys are definitely the winners. Now, because of what's happened, Apple's market value has decreased by around 113 billion. Billion. So, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Honestly, it's nuts. Basically, they're being tried and sued by the US government for being market leaders for too long. Yep, apparently Apple has been in control of the phone and tech market for so long now because they're the best at it that the government have said it's not fair on anyone else, so we're basically just going to sue you. Like, honestly, so you make something good and you stay at the top and then it's like, no, that's not good enough, sorry, you need to give it to some other people. Like, <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. So yeah, I'm really not sure what to make of this, but please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. I don't think Apple's going anywhere. They're pretty much a titan in the industry across the world. I'm not like a huge Apple fan or anything. I do have an iPhone, but all of my computer systems and everything like that are all PC based. I, I've never really used an Apple Mac or a Macintosh or any of those computers before, but I do enjoy the Apple iPhone. Let me know in the comments on what you think about Apple. Do you think that maybe they should be providing more money into the system so they're not just dominating over the whole market? Or do you think they should be left alone because they're a successful business i has the great wall of china always been downplayed to me you know what i found out today it's thirteen thousand miles long do you want to say how long that is bro like i live in la i could drive to new york city right now and that's three thousand miles you got times that by four add a thousand and you still not there and that's a wall so i'm trying to understand who was they defending against and how do you make a wall 13,000 miles long. When I saw 13,000, I was like, oh, but then I'm like, wait a second, wait, 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 13,000, that's kind of far. And then this, once I did it like this, it blew my mind because I was like, oh, sh like, wait a second. I didn't even know China was that big to build a wall that big. Like, they finished building these in 220 BC. Jesus wasn't even roaming around yet. And they had a 13,000 mile wall built. I don't, my brain can't really comprehend that. Like, okay, all of a sudden the pyramids, they not even that cool to me. What the fuck? Was they just, did they just start and they were like, man, we might as well just keep going. Or was there an enemy that was that great that, that they was that scared of that they was like, nah, son. All thir keep it going. We need all 13,000 cover because if they come, it's fucking over. So I don't, bro, 13,000 miles. China has just went up so far in just my random rankings of the world because <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't know people didn't realize that the Great Wall of China was that long. I really am also astonished by how much work was put into the Wall of China because it's a lot, especially for the day. It does make you question, you know, if they were capable of doing that, then there had to have been other things that people were highly advanced at doing as well because that's a lot of work for that time. This might be one of the crazier stories you'll hear today. This is a declassified document from the CIA, thanks to the Freedom of Information Act. It is titled Mars Exploration, and this was in 1984. At that time, the CIA was very into remote viewing. This is Joe McGonagall, and he's one of the most famous remote viewers. If you don't know what remote viewing is, think Eleven from Stranger Things. The things this man has done by sitting in a room, meditating, and literally sending his mind, his consciousness to other areas in the world, it's wild. Oh, and if you don't think he's credible, he was given the Legion of Merit by the U.S. government, so... Yeah, but back to the document. The CIA put him in a room, and they gave him an envelope. The only details he was given for the test was the date and time and coordinates. So what did he see? By the way, again, all declassified, you can go read this document, but he saw pyramids. Again, over here, he saw massive pyramids. He saw a people that were large and they were thin, but he described them as only a shadow, as if they're there, but not there. He basically describes the people talking that they're trying to find their way out. Essentially, you know, something was going on with Mars and the people were trying to escape. I'm trying to keep this as brief as possible, but again, it's fascinating because he was only given coordinates and then the CIA afterwards was like, yeah, we sent you to Mars in the past. So is this factor cap? 
Now, it is important to note that what he saw was kind of like the popular idea for Mars in the 1980s, you know, science fiction realm of what Mars would have been like. But he claims and the CIA claims that he was given no information besides the coordinates. So it's interesting that it took him to Mars. I have heard the interview of this individual remote viewing to Mars. It just I question how did he know how to travel the coordinates to Mars? Like I get how we travel coordinates here on this planet, but traveling to Mars, those coordinates have to be insane, right? And I'm not saying that this guy is a fake. I'm just saying that maybe he was really good at guessing where to go based off of the coordinates because the distance was so great. But I, I really would like to know how did he know to travel to Mars following those coordinates. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Just in case you didn't know, it's completely free to do so. And I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this chart here, you'll see that 26% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. But 73% of the viewers that watch my videos are not subscribed, but keep coming back to view more of my content. So to the 26% of people that are subscribed to the channel, Thank you so much. And to the 73% of the people that are not subscribed, hey, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. NASA just found something really strange in their asteroid samples that were just brought back to Earth from asteroid Bennu. And it's something you might not expect. First of all, let's start off with a little bit of background info. On September 8th, 2016, NASA launched their OSIRIS-REx mission, which would become the first mission to return samples back to Earth from asteroid Bennu, a near-Earth asteroid. It would take OSIRIS-REx over two years for it to finally reach asteroid Bennu, and once there, it didn't take the samples immediately. Instead, it actually waited. It spent around two years surveying asteroid Bennu, trying to find the perfect spot to take the samples. During this time, OSIRIS-REx's landing site was narrowed down to four locations, with ultimately location Nightingale being chosen due to how safe it would be for OSIRIS-REx to land there and the scientific output. Finally, the day came for OSIRIS-REx to land on asteroid Bennu at site Nightingale, and it had a very interesting mechanism that it would use to collect its sample of asteroid Bennu. It would actually shoot a puff of nitrogen gas as it hit the surface of asteroid Bennu, and this would force any loose regolith to basically go into its collection mechanism. Additionally, as it collected its sample of asteroid Bennu, it just needed to fire its thrusters and get out of there. Because the big issue of asteroid Bennu is that its surface is so loose that OSIRIS-REx could just continue through and get really stuck into the asteroid, and we don't want that. Here is the footage of OSIRIS-REx's landing on October 20th, 2020, and you can just see how loose the regolith is on asteroid Bennu. After OSIRIS-REx's sample attempt, it was instructed to point its sample head at its camera in order to see if the attempt was successful. Initially, a maneuver was planned after this in which OSIRIS-REx would spin in order to determine the mass of the sample taken. And if that mass was below 60 grams, then potentially they could go back to asteroid Bennu and try to get a little bit more of a sample. But based off of this image, they figured that most likely they had already exceeded their target and any attempt to try to spin OSIRIS-REx could result in more sample being lost. So then they decided to go ahead and put the sample in its sample return container. More than a year later, OSIRIS-REx would depart asteroid Bennu and begin its journey back to Earth. But before doing that, it actually went back and imaged its landing site, so you could actually see the before and after of its sample site and the change it made to the surface. Once OSIRIS-REx was approaching Earth, it would actually jettison its sample canister, and it needed to make sure that it was on the right trajectory to properly enter Earth's atmosphere and burn up and land on the Utah testing range. After this, OSIRIS-REx had another very important task, and that was to burn its thrusters to get out of the way to not burn up in Earth's atmosphere. Here is some of the footage of OSIRIS-REx landing on the U.S. military's Utah test range. And this dot you see there is OSIRIS-REx carefully gliding down to the surface. Here are also some images that were taken of it after it landed on the surface. Following this, they had the very important task of airlifting it to their lab. Following this, they had to carefully place the sample capsule into the clean room, where then the capsule would be open and the samples would be removed. Once the samples were back in their clean room, they were actually able to access the samples that were on the outside of the mechanism. But the samples trapped more deeply inside the mechanism would require the mechanism to be disassembled that caught them. They had another issue. 
basically two of the fasteners that were holding the sample head on did not want to budge and they didn't want to force them either because if they forced them they could risk potentially shaving off a piece of metal from the sample head which could potentially contaminate the sample so they needed to develop a tool that would help them remove these two stuck fasteners Perhaps most interesting about these samples was they made a rather interesting discovery that they actually have evidence of carbon and water in them. You might be wondering what happened to the part of OSIRIS-REx still in space. Well, it's going into the extended mission phase where NASA will be now getting a free mission to asteroid Apophis, and it will arrive in 2029 after it makes its close approach of Earth. Here's the rough shape that we believe asteroid Apophis to be, and when it was first observed, we actually thought it had as high as a 2.7% chance of hitting Earth. And if it did that, it would annihilate all life on Earth as we know it. However, lucky for us, asteroid Apophis will only pass around 30,000 miles away from Earth, which is still really close. That's pretty awesome if all of this stuff is real. You know how I am with NASA. I'm not a huge believer in NASA, but I do like what they have to show sometimes, and this was pretty fascinating to me. It just makes me wonder, though, if this is all a stunt to just say, hey, we need more money. For example, that tool that they required to have to take that piece apart, how much do you think that that cost? That probably cost a pretty good chunk of change, and that's where I, I feel like they're lying about certain situations to come up with excuses to spend more money, to spend more money on things that they really don't need or should have. You, you mean to tell me that these individuals could calculate where the meteor was going to be, how to land on it perfectly in the right spot, but to find out when they got the device back to Earth that they were going to have to make a new tool to open it, they should have probably known that, right? It, it just makes it so much more difficult for me to believe when they do silly little odd things like that. These people should have known everything that they needed ahead of time. It just makes it seem like it's a bigger picture to a story that involves more money. And that's probably just me being like, oh, them darn tax dollars being used up. But I just, I sense that there's some fakeness going on here just to collect more money from people. But again, I could be completely off the mark on this. NASA is just trying their hardest to do space exploration and I'm just cutting them down. Let me know in the comments on what you think because I'm sure there's definitely believers in NASA, but I know a lot of people that do not believe in NASA. That's one heck of a water tower, isn't it? Well, it's an old school water tower. Imagine you thought you knew something that was kept very secret for a very long time. Not just kept secret. It was turned upside down so it would be kept secret forever because people who didn't keep it a secret or people who questioned it, uh, they were kooky quacks or satanic or witches or demons or wizards or something like that. That's another water tower. pretty cool ain't it if your intuition or gut feeling or just knowing deep inside the difference between right and wrong wasn't real then it would have faded and it would have passed away but truth never fades it's real that's easy to see it's right in front of our faces over the last 45 minutes those are lines see them one two three that makes a total of seven that I've watched in the last 45 minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's a total of ten of them up there. Nobody questions this. Nobody cares. Nobody says why. Nobody says who said so and who gives them the authority to say so. And why are they doing that? And how did they come up with them conclusions for what's going on? Mm, that's really easy to see and you can talk about it and research it and learn everything you want to know about condensation trails cloud seeding but what about your dreams our dreams are so much more than we think they are 
And I'm talking like 99% of us. So this isn't no secret, but everybody's ignorant to what it's really all about. What about dreaming? Dreaming is a human condition. We all do it. Why are we all so ignorant to dreaming? Watching this happen in the sky is another example of how we just overlook things and we're too busy and distracted. Well, I can't worry about them line, stupid lines in the sky. The sun's still shining. My plants still seem to be blooming and growing. Well, when you're really tuned into nature, you can see changes happening. And you can't be a 15 to 25 year old to be tuned into nature. It just doesn't happen that way. You need to be tuned into nature over a long period of time to be able to see a long period of change. And this contributes to change. Everything is about cause and effect. Everything. It's a law. It's a law that uh, it can't be broken. It can't be manipulated. It can't be argued. If something happens, it has an effect. Well, your dreams are the same way. You dream and it has an effect. And it's right in front of your eyes, just like this. Only it happens when your eyes are closed. And it's dark and green and creepy looking. No wonder we all ignore it. I wouldn't say that we're too busy or too distracted to notice the changes that are happening around us. I, I really feel like a lot of people are clearly aware, but there's not much that they can do about it. I see planes flying by leaving chemtrails all the time. In, in the matter of 10 minutes or so, that chemtrail is then dispersed throughout the sky, and it, it happens a lot. And it just makes me wonder, you know, probably different particles coming from those planes that's altering our system, that's making people sick, that's really changing the environment for the worse in the long run. It might not seem bad now, but in the long run, it's going to become really hazardous, I think. And I, I feel like that is the ultimate plan. They want to make the air and everything super hazardous because people will eventually have to pay for air. I am a big believer that that is going to happen, and I just do not know how to change that reality, you know? If anyone has any uh, input or comments that they want to add to this, because it is interesting, I do know I see change happening quite frequently, and I'm starting to see how these changes are affecting people and myself, and there's no real way for me to figure out how to beat that system. Y'all, look at this shit, y'all. Look at this. Look at this around the sun. And they just started blocking out the sun. They just started blocking out the sun. But look at that. It's dark, dark. Like, it looks circle, right? It's an incomplete circle. What is that, y'all? As soon as it started coming out, started to come out, they blocked the sun. What the? Do y'all see that? Look at that. What is that? Yo, that's supposed to be the sun. That is supposed to be the sun. <laughs> Bro, what's going on? What happened to the sun? What happened to the sun? And the sun just crossed that, whatever it is. I don't know, to me that just looked like regular standard clouds, nothing really mysterious or extraterrestrial or anything about those types of clouds, those just look like some Florida storm clouds to me. But let me know what you guys think. I have a feeling just there's so many people right now on social media looking up at the sky that they're finding any little type of thing to look at and point at and say, hey, there's something there, even though there really isn't. I might have been missing what was there, but I didn't see anything.
I don't know. I was reading through the comments and a lot of people are really hating on this video. It does look like the sun is setting within the clouds and that should be impossible. You know, if the sun's out in space 90 some million miles away, we should not be able to see it setting in the clouds on Earth. Apparently reading some of these comments, people are saying that the sun is setting behind the horizon and we're just seeing the reflection of it on the clouds. But I don't know, that really looked like a solid mass just sinking itself into the clouds real slowly. But again, I'm not sure. And everyone that knows me that watches my videos, I'm not, e I'm not a flat earther and I'm not a globe earther. I'm kind of in the middle until I see everything with my own eyes and not being on a phone. Let me know, are you a flirther or are you a glurther? I'm personally in the middle. But that did look like the sun setting within the clouds, I will have to say. Yeah, 2024 just got so much crazier. What the hell is going on? Even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. So I'm sure you all know what an eclipse is, you know? A solar eclipse, like, it's quite a cool thing to see. Well, there is a large solar eclipse which is taking place on the 8th of April, which is going to be visible all across America, South America, and Canada. There are now warnings coming out saying emergency officials warn people to stock up on food ahead of the eclipse. People preparing for, like, a state of emergency. Like, what is going on? Now hang on a minute, because the last time there was a solar eclipse here, I remember going out with the little glasses on and just chilling like it was a good thing. Like as far as I remember, people want to see this, it's not a scary thing, right? Yeah, for some reason in America they are saying that this is a warning, it's an emergency and this is not going to be good. But why? Which of course is leading people to believe that this might not just be a solar eclipse. We've seen mobile providers and everything going down recently, we had Facebook had a huge outage on there a couple of weeks ago. People believing it's a solar storm or a cyber attack of some kind. To be honest, this is probably just America being extremely dramatic as always, like... I'm sorry guys. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this, I don't get it. And if you're in America, are you going to be going to watch it, or are you going to be stocking up on food preparing for the end of the world? Hit that follow button, and I'll keep you updated. Yeah, I personally do not believe that anything catastrophic is going to happen during the solar event. I do think that there might be some property damage, people fighting and things like that because there's so many people traveling to certain locations just to view this and it's that that could be a problem. But as far as like a major event happening to where you really need to stock up on food and water and things like that, don't get me wrong, I am going to have a stock up of food and water, but I don't really believe it to be that serious. But we'll see, the time is approaching pretty soon, so only time will tell. Always say less than necessary, law number four. And it's the fact that by talking too much in a meeting or in any kind of situation, you make people inadvertently smell weakness on you. What I'm trying to say in my book is a lot of communication between humans is nonverbal. Mm -hmm. We feel we sense something from you and it communicates and we have an impression. And people who talk a lot generally give an impression of they don't know how to control themselves. Whereas people who kind of say a little bit less, who kind of speak in riddles almost, who say, yeah, yeah, that's great, I'll think about it, or whatever, gives off an impression of power, as if they know more than they actually do. Mm -hmm. Because the game of power, a lot of it has to do with appearances. <laughs> no wonder people say I talk too much. I can smell the fear on me. <laughs> Did you hear on back-to-back -back days, General Flynn and Ron Paul on Tucker Carlson's show are talking about a black swan event. We're reaching this point where... Uh, some sudden thing is going to happen. I've now, for those that don't know, a black swan event is an unpredictable event that is beyond what is normally expected from a situation and that has potentially severe consequences. So you're just going about your day and like 9-11 happens, stock market crashes, something crazy like that. Now, I have been talking a lot over the last four years about an old guard falling and a new guard rising. And history proves that when there is any type of like changing of the guard where new people are coming into places of authority, it gets very chaotic because the ones that are in the position of power don't want to lose their power. All right, I'm going to play these videos back to back, but then I'm going to add some notes on the end. We're reaching this point where uh, some sudden thing is going to happen. I believe, I believe in that theory of the black swan. Yes. It's going to pop up and... Uh, it's, it's not going to be controllable. But people, you ask, what can they do? I think the most important thing is understand what's going on. Things, we call them black swan events, right? Black swan events are things that nobody imagined could occur, and yet they did, right? 
and, and and they and they you know and then they have these incredibly you know mostly devastating effects so things get very chaotic they get very stormy because there's a guard transfer that is occurring and when those kind of things happen black swan events become predictable which is interesting because they're supposed to be unpredictable but people that could see in the spirit and people that can read history and know how it constantly repeats itself knows that when there's a change of guard that's happening when people that are losing their place of power things get very chaotic and they try to do whatever they can to stay in power and that could just create those kind of events like a black swan event we can talk about other things like a wealth transfer like what happened when the israelites left egypt or the fall of saul rise of david where saul was taken down as the first king and david was put in as the second king we could talk about daniel and the lion's den or meshach shadrach and abednego going into the fire all of these kind of things surround black swan event territory let's see what happens I'm not sure. I think that black swan events are actually predicted, and I think that a lot of people have them in their back pocket just in case things aren't going their way. For example, like maybe if the people of the world are starting to get comfortable, they're able to afford a livelihood, things, things are good right now. They're going to cause this black swan event to shake things up and put people back down in a place to where they're not comfortable anymore. I really think that black swan events are a planned thing for higher ups. What do you guys think? And what do you think the last black swan event was? Do you think that that was during the pandemic or do you think that there is a newer version of the black swan that's out now and I'm just not aware of it? Let's move into the JFK Marilyn Monroe assassination. <laughs> They had wiretapped Marilyn Monroe's phone, and she was calling up Bobby Kennedy, saying that she was going to hold a press conference to tell the whole world what Kennedy had told her about, and I'm quoting, the objects from outer space from the 40s found in New Mexico, a clear reference to Roswell and a couple of the other events that happened out there. So Marilyn, because I think the Kennedy brothers had, had distanced themselves because of the affair she was having with Jack Kennedy. She was angry. And so she was threatening to spill the beans in a public news conference where the whole world would have been there. So before she could do that, uh, Wetworks killed her, made it look like an overdose of drugs that has just gotten documented by a good friend of mine, Paula Harris, who's a researcher. Um, you know, it's, it's fascinating. And there's materiel associated with that. It really seemed like the world went on tilt when JFK started talking about extraterrestrials. I don't know if I'm a, a fan of John F. Kennedy or what his whole situation was. He was way before my time personally. But I do know that he was talking about extraterrestrials and he had a lot of info on them and he was really wanting to go public with it. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if there's many reasons why people around him got assassinated, including himself. Josh Peck is under fire after a recent TikTok video. If I haven't talked to you since 2023, take that as a fucking sign that you don't exist to me anymore. Damn, you fucking bug. You got sprayed with the raid. Bye. See you in that bar. Fans are upset that Josh Peck has not publicly shown support for Drake Bell. After bringing to light the abuse he suffered as a child star, fans have actually reported that Josh Peck has blocked them after commenting about Drake on his recent posts. Drake Bell has since made his own TikTok asking fans to go easy on Josh and letting them know that Josh has reached out to him. Um, I've noticed a lot of uh, comments on, on some of Josh's TikToks and so I want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and uh, he has reached out to, uh, uh, to talk with me and, and help me work through this and, and uh, has been really, really great. So. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh, take it a little easy on him. Hi, but what are your thoughts on this? Do you think Josh Peck should be speaking up? Let us know in the comments and follow along for more updates on this story. Just in case no one is aware of what Drake and Josh is, that is a kid show on Nickelodeon back in the day, probably the early 2000s, I think. And apparently Dan Schneider, the director of the show, a lot of different kid shows, apparently did some pretty nasty things to these child star actors and actresses.
And this individual, his name is Drake Bell, he went out and he publicly talked about, you know, his past with Dan Schneider and the horrible things that that individual did to him in the past. And I guess the Josh individual was just like, you know, hey, I'm not really caring, too bad, boo-hoo. I really don't know the full backstory behind it other than what this video just talked about. But nonetheless, if any of those child actors and actresses had to go through anything that Drake said that they went through, that's pretty messed up and hopefully something gets done with Dan Schneider about that because that needs to be stopped immediately. But then again, I don't know if any of that's real because Drake Bell is now coming out with a new song album and things like that. So it just makes me wonder, is all of this media to get attention to them or are they really trying to put the word out there? Because I'd hope that nobody would put the word out there that someone did such horrible things and it wasn't true because that would be pretty messed up. People don't want nuclear energy because they think of nukes and they think of nuclear meltdowns and they think of Chernobyl and they think of Fukushima and they think of atomic bombs and that's it and that's stupid and I agree with you but nuclear energy is a totally viable alternative to other forms of then fossil why fuel. does the radical left oppose it you think it's just this map see you for the, same, for, the just... same, for the same reason the, the right opposes vaccines because it sounds scary and it's a big thing and they don't trust it it comes well, the right promises. has a reason to distrust vaccines in the aftermath of the COVID de debacle. <laughs> well, because think, they were imposed by force. And that was a you, very You get to choose idea. if you have a nuclear power plant? That's imposed by force too, no? You don't get to choose where your energy comes from if you live in a country. You just, you turn the light switch and hopefully you don't have a Chernobyl that melts down in your particular town, right? Well, you get to choose it because you can buy it or not. Negative. Nobody had a choice with the vaccines. Nobody had a choice whether or not they lived near Chernobyl or not. Nobody has a choice. Sure There's can, a nuclear power plant. Away. That's like telling conservatives when uh, Biden tried to do okay, the OSHA well, mandate for vaccines, look, like, well, you just get a different job. I'm right? not, I don't want to debate about whether or not large nuclear power plants are mm -hmm. frightening. They are. It's kind of a, a harsh thing to say is, oh, well, if you're uncomfortable by it, just move away. Like, who has the money just to do that, you know? But I get where these two individuals are going. I do really like nuclear power, but it's way too scary for me to be a part of it unless it was already a natural part of life. What do you guys think? Do you think nuclear energy would be the way to go? Or do you think that we should try to form a new source of energy, whether that be draw energy from the sun or what exactly? I, I died when I was eight. I got electrocuted and my heart stopped beating. And ever since that day, I could see ghosts. Because my first experience with a ghost happened during an open casket funeral. And when I was eight, I went to this wake, this open casket wake, and I uh, saw this old guy in the casket. I didn't know who it was. It was a family, family friend. And I, saw, I was looking at this old guy. And then I looked at my grandma, looked back at the old guy. I looked to the corner. I see this the same old guy on the casket, but he was standing in the corner. He yeah. had a twin. I, I didn't know. Maybe. He could have. I didn't ask. I was so freaked out. I was like staring at the old guy, staring at the casket guy. But they both looked the same. Maybe it was a twin, maybe not. I didn't ask. I said, okay, Grandma, let's go. I don't know if I necessarily believe this individual. It's kind of hard to just say, hey, yeah, I died when I was eight. And then after the fact, when I went to this person's funeral, I seen him in the casket and then him standing over in the corner as well and not really question it. Now, does he still see ghosts to this day? Is he able to actually distinguish the two? Because that would make it a little bit more believable. For all we know, he could have just been seeing the guy's brother, cousin, or someone that just looked really similar. Not that I'm saying I do not believe in ghosts. I have my own speculations when it comes to ghosts, and I do believe that there's some kind of presence left behind from people, but I'm not sure if I necessarily believe this individual. Let me know in the comments, do you believe in ghosts? Or if you do, how do you think ghosts exist in our realm do you think they're in a different realm and they're just bleeding into ours or what do you think they are exactly because i'm very curious about that question so for all of the uh, flat earth deniers i got something for you here's our sun right here pretty clear let's just turn a little bit oh what is that we got the moon here And we got the sun here. How's this work on a globe? 
I thought the moon is supposed to be beneath me right now, right? Because it's, it's nighttime in Australia. So the moon is supposed to be underneath us, but, but it's right above my head. The same way the sun is because earth is flat and non-rotating the same way the bible tells us i've been seeing a lot of videos like this one in particular i do see the moon and the sun at the same time a lot but not all the time and as far as australia goes they should be able to see the moon when i see the moon but they cannot see the sun so that would be the big question. When we see the sun here in America and the moon, what does Australia see? I'm, I'm pretty certain that they only see the moon. So to anyone in Australia, let me know, do you guys ever see the sun and the moon? And at what time specifically do you see both of them? Because I would like to compare the two from America time to Australian time. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. As always, if you are interested in any of the clips that we watched today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.